the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Kalimerasas. I pray the Lord is, will be with you this day and through this coming week. A few weeks ago, Father Nicholas Mueller was here serving for me and I was informed by one of my grandsons, I only have two. Papu, I really like Father Nicholas, he really moved through the service very quickly. <laughs> so I will endeavor, at least in this moment, to move through my words for this homily as quickly as possible. Last week we heard from the epistle reading from St. Paul that when filled with the Spirit, we are filled with love and joy and faithfulness and happiness and steadfastness. That we should only not be in the Spirit, but we should walk in the Spirit. And this morning, St. Paul tells us then, as we walk, we should walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. So all of those gifts, those virtues that were listed last week, all are part of the light that we are given by Christ through the Holy Spirit. As we commemorate the forefathers of Christ, the forefathers all the way back to Abraham, through Moses and the prophets and the kings and the judges, all of them were chosen by God to bring forward a message of salvation, each of them to deliver a certain kind of message to the Hebrew people that represented all of humanity. God did not give up each time that message somehow fell upon deaf ears. He continued. He found other people in every generation to share that message with them. And individually, when we look at their lives, we see that also they were men and women of great faith. When asked upon by the Lord to do something, they did it. They didn't question. Abraham was asked after so many years, after 100 years of living and his wife, Sarah, at 90, to bear a son, Isaac, that which he had desired his whole life. The Lord then tells him, you will take the, your son and you will sacrifice him. The Lord wanted to test his faith. But the Lord had tested his faith. This young man at the age of 25 left, according to scripture and as the Lord commanded, left his family, his parents, his kin, and his country at the age of 25 and went into a foreign land called Canaan. And there he established himself. And then after another 24, 25 years, the Lord says to him, not only is your seed to bless many nations, but this land is also promised to you and those of your seed. And then the Lord proceeded to give him a command, a law, and that law referred to circumcision. I, Abraham would then live to be a hundred and see his son Isaac. He would be asked to sacrifice his son, but the Lord at the last moment sees that the man is full of faith and sends an angel to hold him back. There was no question in Abraham's mind. He followed the Lord, his instruction, and his laws. And each of those that the Lord chose did the same. All the way through the New Testament and the martyrs of the church 
and the saints of the church, they all followed the Lord's instruction to them without question. They did not have any excuses. Which brings me to the gospel passage this morning. There's a great banquet and this invitations have been sent out. And then some of the regrets start to come in. I have bought a field and I need to examine it. I pray you have me excused. And another, I bought a yoke of oxen and I need to examine them. I pray you have me excused. And the third, I have married a wife and I cannot join you. I'm not sure why the Lord put that last one in there. Interesting. Except experience tells us many things. So the master and the Lord sends his servant out, well, go out and find the lame and the blind and invite them to come in. And the servant says, Lord, Lord, we have done that and there is still room. Then go out to the hedges and the roads and the streets, compel people to come in. For my house must be filled, says the Lord. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. Rather harsh to simply say, I cannot join you, but then that's it. There is no other invitation according to this scripture. None of those who were invited shall taste my banquet, for many are called, but few are chosen. So this message comes to all of us. I don't know how often the Lord speaks to you, but from time to time in prayer, I hear the Lord's voice. I try to follow every instruction, either through scripture, through prayer. The Lord is very clear to us how we should live our life and we should try to follow each of those examples and instructions to us. He did not only just say them, he also lived them. He was one of us. We will celebrate his incarnation in a couple of weeks. And he was flesh and blood like us. And he was tempted like us. And he suffered like us. And he was tortured, perhaps not like us, physically, but perhaps there are other tortures that we experience. I'm sure he felt that many times in preaching to his disciples, they weren't listening. And perhaps some of them had so many excuses why they could not, why they could not. Peter says, I will never deny you, and yet denies him three times. But the Lord does not forget. But he speaks to him at the end and offers us an opportunity do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Do you love me? Yes, you know, Lord, I love you. Do you love me? Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. So we are given this gospel today, just a couple of weeks before we celebrate the Lord's birth, his incarnation becoming flesh. And we have so many saints of the church that exhibit such dedication and faithfulness. We not only remember the forefathers of the Old Testament before and after the law, we also remember today Saint Spiridon, a shepherd, a humble and simple man who took care of sheep and he married and he had a daughter and his wife died and the people felt that he should be the next person to be their bishop and they proclaimed him bishop on the island of Cyprus. 
His relics, however, are found on the island of Corfu, Kekira. Saint Spiridon, although he was simple and humble, he had such great faith that when he attended the first ecumenical council, he stood before all, including Arius and all of his believers, and in such a simple but profound and meaningful way taught about the Holy Trinity. He held up a brick, and as he squeezed the brick, fire and water and clay were separated. And he used that example to share with those who had attended. The Holy Trinity is made up of three separate persons, yet they make one God, just like this brick. And can you tell the difference when it is whole? And yet you understand each of those three persons as they involve themselves in our lives. Such a great teaching from such a simple and humble man, but such great faith that this man had. And how so many of the saints are like him. Let us hear the word of God and let us not make excuses. When we read the word of God, let us try our very best to fulfill that instruction. When we are confronted by fear and anxiety, let us look upon the Lord and ask for hope and guidance in a decision. When we are filled with sickness and illness and pain, let us remember the Lord's suffering and how he went to the cross to save humanity. And when we celebrate, let us remember this parable that a great banquet was held and invitations went out to all. But how many gave excuses why they could not come? And think about the excuses. I bought a field. I have to go examine it. How do you buy a field without first examining it? Or a yoke of oxen and I have to see them? Really, do you buy something like that without first looking at it? And yet how many of us are married? And how many of us use the excuse of spouse to not do something? All of those excuses really are lame when it comes especially in answering the Lord's call, his invitation to us. Let us answer that call. Let us answer that invitation with a profound and strong and faithful yes, Lord. I am here. I will follow you. Instruct me where to go. And the Lord will lead our steps. Amen.